All right, so we are going to be talking about installing this AM5 CPU f contact frame. Um, so I am uh, installing this in my own gaming machine um, that I recently built. Um, so it is running 7800 X3D. Um, so I, I actually did some research before I... Um, uh, bought this um, hardware. Um, anyways, as you can see here, it's um, actually machined out of uh, aluminum and um, just you know, just kind of line up the orientations. So first, I got to do is remove the uh, AIO cooler. Um, so it has a USB-C connection. Um, on the top, there's a few other connections for the fans, RGBs, and pump control. So. Uh, yeah, so to make more room, make it easier, uh, I have to remove the GPU. Um, I'm actually kind of happy that I have uh, this 90 degree bend power cable. Um, some people say that, you know, this is, you know, as same as uh, having the normal cables bent 90 degrees, but uh, um, I don't know. Uh, to me, it feels like it's designed this way so that see it's actually better than bending the cable 90 degrees. Um, so, you know, again, that potentially led, led to uh, hot por um, ports on the power plug and, you know, burned up the connection. So, anyways, so I have this 90 degree um, elbow power cable um, that makes things, you know, disconnect a lot quicker. Uh, so now the GPU is removed. Um, I'm proceeding to uh, remove the uh, pump from the AIO. Uh, what I have here is a Lee and Lee uh, Galahead, I think it's called, 2 with cell CD. So it's actually 280 millimeters. So it's got two of the uh, 140 mil fans um, to push air through. Um, so now the retention clip or the uh, yeah clip is removed um, from the plate and then allow me to remove the pump and I yeah it's kind of hard to work on this when things are connected and uh, had cable management in the back uh, so I really don't have a lot of space to move those things around uh, so what I end up doing I think is um, removing the USB-C cable that is connected to the pump and that gives a little bit more space um, and I had to also kind of worry about the uh, uh, access um, thermal paste uh, that is that was applied um, so I use um, I think it's called thermal grizzly um, it works okay um, it's definitely um, in more of a liquid form than more of the, like a solid paste form um, so I didn't really notice that big, that much of a difference between um, the this thermal paste um, and further down in the video that I was actually putting on the uh, thermal paste that came with the uh, was the uh, frame um, and I've been running uh, running it for a few days now and I haven't really noticed the difference uh, in terms of performance so uh, maybe it is about the same or better with the frame installed um, but I have already um, I haven't really seen any real temperature drop or anything um, it's been running as normal as they can be um, so what I need to do is take the screws out or um, unfasten the screws from the uh, the current CPU retention clip whatever it's called, retainer. Um, so instead of doing that, <laughs> that was actually harder. Instead of doing that, I actually took the CPU out. Um, one of the reasons is because uh, there were definitely access um, thermal paste on the side of the CPU. Um, so it's hard to see. Oh, you can kind of see it, right? And it's kind of, it's got goos all over the place. 
Um, it's more in the in this picture's you know lower left corner. There's definitely a lot more. So what I ended up using is um, Q-tip. Uh, this Q-tip that I bought was actually for gun cleaning. Um, it is harder. It has a sharper tip. So it's easier to get into the smaller spaces. Um, I ended up going through like three or four of them to uh, clean up a paste. Um, as soon as you have more paste, decent amount of paste in the on the thing, and it's going to be hard to clean. So I had to go through it a couple of times with different Q-tips and clean it up. Um, so yeah, so that was kind of pain in the butt to clean. Um, and then I think eventually I noticed that there was a little bit that went onto the socket, the side of the socket, not actually in the socket. So, um, but anyway, so I'm just, just still more cleaning. Um, so the goal is to take the CP out, cleaning it, cleaning up, and then the bottom of the pompos also need to be cleaned, um, and then take the retention clip, you know, whatever it is called that's holding the CPU down, unscrew the screws on there, pop that out, and then install the new uh, contact frame in my case it's a little bit harder because the uh leading lead pump clip or um screw downs or whatever the plastic piece on the side um they are very close and it was actually harder to take the the cpu retention clip off um, so i had to loosen up the plastic clips i guess i don't know whatever it's called the plastic pieces, um, make those loose and then that'll pop out. Um, uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but, um, I think I did notice that there was a little bit of, um, uh, thermal paste on there. And again, proceeding to clean more of the CPU, it was just a lot left on there from the last application. Um, I did. So while we're waiting for this, um, I did actually install the CPU, with a thermal paste, I normally do a dab, like a large dab in the middle. Um, and then I read online that for AM5 CPUs, it's better to do the cross. Um, so I ended up reapplying it. And apparently I think I applied a little bit more than I should. Um, so that's why the CPU came out and I need to clean it make sure that it's, it just doesn't have enough. It doesn't have the, you know, the thermal paste run everywhere. And again, with the new thermal paste um it's a lot thicker than uh thermal grizzlies um so i i'm hoping that it won't actually have the same type of runs that it did on this um and again it's been running fine for a few days now uh didn't really notice any difference so just um use a wipe to clean up the you know anything that's on top of the cpu um Make sure that it's clean. Uh, and another Q-tip to you know get into small spaces. Make sure that it's, it's the last of it. Um, yeah, there's just mo majority of this video is actually cleaning. There's <laughs> less uninstalling, installing. Um, it's actually kind of a good time for me to kind of check and see how things were. Uh, this is my first AMD build in a long time. Um, there's me sort of dry feeding. Oh, as you can kind of see the CPU, the bottom of the CPU. There's actually some thermal paste there. Um, ended up cleaning it. Um, so anyway, so this is my first AMD build uh, in a long time, and um, I normally, you know, um, build Intel ones. Uh, my last workstation or game gaming rig is um, was using a um, i7 9700K, um, and uh, it's not nearly as hot as the CPU. Or doesn't get as hot uh, so I think my normal temperature with that other Intel was like 50 maybe 55 max um, this one I'm constantly seeing like 60 70 at like full load when I play games it's probably around like 50 55 so it's not too bad for the CPU but it, it's you know I've gotten used to like really low temperatures so, uh, so anyways CPUs lined up um, the frame goes on um, what I noticed that a lot of people don't say in their videos, I actually did a lot of research on this frame. I know it doesn't do anything about temperature. You may see like a one or two degree drop, may. Um, but most people say that it doesn't really, they don't see any difference. Um, and uh, it is really just there to hold a, 
PC CPU better, so to preventing warping and all that stuff. So so that's the main reason I'm actually installing. I'm not installing because I want it to be cooler. It's a little bit different than the uh, the, the Intel CPUs. The 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 frame um, actually help to reduce the temperature. In some cases, I think there's people are saying like five to ten degrees. In this case, there's no there's no decrease in temperature, no advantage in that in that at all. So. I knew that when I got into this, uh, when I bought the parts, and I knew that I'm not going to be seeing any differences in that. But um, I just wanted to, you know, have a better sort of retention clip that hold the CPU in better. So I don't want the warp, the warp of motherboard or anything. So once it's installed, uh, again back to what I was saying is that um, I've looked at a lot of videos of installation videos, people doing reviews and all this stuff. The machine, the machine part itself is very, very good. Um, it fits the CPU really well, and it um, and it, it it's it, there's like almost no gap between the line, the the edge of the CPU and where it touches the frame. What I did notice is, and again, not in many videos that I've at least not in any videos I've seen, is that the frame, the aluminum frame, once it sits in there, it doesn't sit flush with the CPU. There may be like a tiny little bit of, um, um, what's the right word? Um, I think the CPU sticks out a little bit more. It's probably the easiest way to explain it. Um, so the frame sits on the CPU where it, it blocks all the, you know, like the things on the, uh, all the way around it. Um, but once it's on air, there's like maybe one or two millimeters of gap or difference height difference between the CPU itself and the frame that has never been mentioned in any of the reviews and any of the YouTube videos that I've seen a lot of people are just saying like, hey it fits really well and all that stuff maybe different versions this is an official thermal uh, whatever whatever whoever makes the, the, the main ones um, <clears throat> and as is version 2 uh, so so this one I don't know if it makes any difference between this one and the first one. I know there's uh, one video that I saw with the 9800X3D. They're saying that it only fits with the version 1, not the version 2. So the, the reason for that is, um, at least I think in that specific case, is that the frame with the version 2 is too tight. Uh, they can't fit over the actual CPU. Um so anyways, uh, with this one, if it's really well, very tight, um, and again, I think there's maybe like one millimeter of height difference between the frame and the CPU, the top of the CPU. So that's one thing I noticed. It's not in anywhere, any videos that I've seen. I don't think it makes that that big of a difference. Um, to me, it is like, again, it's it's a clip that's holding or a frame that's holding the CPU. I, I'm not looking to have it to be part of the top of the CPU or the heat spreader, right? So, so now here I'm doing the, the cross again. And because this is so thick, um, I ended up adding a few dabs around it between the cross. Um, I don't think it's going to run. And also the reviews of a lot of people, uh, videos of reviews uh, from a lot of people saying that the frame also helps from thermal paste runs, right? So it doesn't actually get onto the CPU to just, you know, kind of stuck on the frame which is fine in my case uh so see there's probably quite a bit of uh thermal paste there but again it's very thick i i, I don't know if it's just just the way it is made or again i i've seen a few videos that people using the the one that the thermal paste that came with the kid uh but nobody was actually saying that the paste is very thick in the in my case the, the it's it's probably it feels like almost, it's almost dry um, but it did, um, it did, uh, apply properly. Um, and so, you know, that's what I would end up using, um, with the amount of force that the, the clips that has from the pump onto the motherboard, um, it actually, like in the last few tries that I've done, I, no I noticed that the, the thermal paste actually got spread pretty well. So even with this very really thick thermal paste, I, it should still work fine. And again, I've been using it for a few days and it's fine. 
Um, I've not seen any temperature issues or anything. So now that the the nuts are going back on to holding the to hold the pump back on, um, and that's pretty much it. I, like once this is done, it's you know plug in a USB C cable that I unplugged, and that's pretty much all I needed to install. Like like I said, the majority of this video was actually cleaning of the existing the thermos that's existing on the socket or not the socket the uh, the cpu um and the heat spreader and all that stuff than like actual uninstalling and installing um so this part is just putting the screw on and and then send it back up so um and i think i did a little bit more cleaning once i'm done at the when i was trying to push the pump down onto the cpu to spread the thermal paste and they end up leaving some fingerprints on the screen. So, um, but anyway, so, uh, you know, putting this back on, uh, my AIO again, it's, uh, you know, two to the 180s, and I have it in the front. So my intake is in the front uh, where the AIO is. It pushes air through the AIO into the case, and there's a fan, intake fan on the bottom of that, pushing cold air in, uh, hopefully more or less utilized by the GPU. Um, and uh, I have two, I have uh, two 140 mil fans on top, and then one 140 mil fan on the back. And the, the, all three of them on the top and the back are exhaust. So I got cold air coming in from the front, and then exhaust hot air exhaust on the top and the back. So the reason for that is um, the case does get not the case, but the GPU does get kind of hot, right? So the the exhaust fan on the back tend to draw hot air out pretty quickly and then if there's any buildup of the, the hot air inside of the case it tends to draw them out and and because there's not as much airflow through the AIO because it has to go through all the fins and stuff uh, compared to like just a fan blown air in um, in my setup it's almost having a little bit of negative pressure in the case because actually pulling more air out than it can uh, pump in the cold air uh, but obviously there's you know um, fan grills and stuff on the bottoms that allow cold air to come in from the bottom um, so so you know cold air is going to come through from other places but at least at least you know uh, the way that I had it set up is is you know in more or less of a negative pressured case or airflow so um <clears throat> So the top and the back fan are setting are set up using the same sensor, um, and they run at the same speed. The one in the front under the AIO uh, is uh, set with a different curve, so it will pull a little bit more cold air in if needed, based on the temperature uh, of the chipset underneath that uh, GPU. So, so anyway, so so again, that the, that's the airflow, right? And and the thing is because this case has nothing but 140 mil fans i actually nicknamed this gaming rig um only 140 fans <laughs> uh so because it's only have 140 mil fans um and yeah so you know this is pretty much just putting everything back together um and i really like the fact that the cable can be disconnected uh, that way as at the end of the cable versus the connector on the gpu so, yeah, that's pretty much it.